Hello, Outpost Gray fam. I am super excited to have you guys here for our live stream. And I'm even more excited about the guests that we're going to have on the show today. But before we jump in and bring our special guests on the show, I want to provide you a little bit of updates about what we're doing behind the scenes here at Outpost Gray. So as you guys might have seen or might not have seen, we are really excited because we're launching a new series called CMMC. That's the Cyber Maturity Model Certification. It's a big thing that's taking place right now in the government space. And so what I decided to do is create a five-part series around the CMMC. Now, this is going to be a micro-education series. So what that means is it's going to be videos that are 10 minutes or less and our first series is kicking next, kicking off next week on the 14th, and it's going to be covering what is CMMC and who will be impacted by CMMC. Following that, I think it's on the 21st, the very next Thursday, we have another special guest on the show, Eric Spencer. You need to follow and watch him. This guy is amazing. He's going to come on the show and share his journey into the cybersecurity space and also talk about his recent accomplishments of passing the infamous CISSP. So we're really excited to have him on the show. But without further ado, why are you guys here today? Well, we are doing an AMA, and I am so thrilled because um, the individual that we have coming on the show is a dear friend of mine, and the organization is very near and dear to my heart, VETSEC. So this year is the third year for VetSecCon 2021, and there are a lot of things going on with VetSec. And the individual that will be coming on the show today is Thomas Marslin. He's a very dear friend of mine, and I am really excited because he has a very unique background. He has spent the majority of his time in the United States Navy, and he's gone from I think it was nuclear in, in the nuclear space now into being an infosec ninja. And so I'm going to allow Tom to kind of share his personal journey into the cybersecurity space, where he is today. Let's learn about veteran security. And then let's also talk about this conference that's coming up at the end of this month. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring Tom onto the stage. Hey, Welcome Jax. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thanks for having me on. I love it. And the, the I love it because the chat is already blowing up. So thank you guys for the support. Um, Tom, before we jump into all things VetSec, I would love to just take a few minutes for you to share a, a little bit about your personal journey into this space and then share about how you went from military into being the chairman of the board for VetSec. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to talk. Um, so I've been active duty Navy for 20 years. I'm, I'm on my final tour before I retire. Um, I started with nuclear power on submarines and that's really still the field that I'm in in the Navy. But a few years back, I started looking for, forward to my transition. Um, I got my bachelor's degree in IT security. That's always been an interest of mine. And now I'm working on my master's. Um, I came into VETSEC really about two years ago now because I was interested in my own transition and looking for resources out there and just became involved in the community and saw how amazing it was. And about a year and a half ago now, uh, board elections came up inside the, the nonprofit. We're all volunteer doing this in our own free time, you know, no paycheck or anything for it. And I volunteered to help out and that's kind of it. I'm That's what, why I'm here today. I love that. So we were talking a little bit before we hit record about kind of the history of VETSEC. And I'd love if you could share, like, how did it originate? Where did it come from? Where did the idea come from three years ago to really launch this organization? Yeah, absolutely. It started really just an idea of getting some veterans together in the InfoSec space to do some networking. Um, it started just as a Slack channel and then quickly formed into a nonprofit. Um, one of our original founders is Heath Adams, the cyber mentor over at TCM Security. So shout out to Heath. Um, and then it quickly developed its footings as a 501c3 nonprofit so that they could get benefits for the members and has just kind of snowballed from there. I love that. Thank you, Heath, uh, for your support on VetSec. It's definitely impacted a lot of individuals. 
especially myself included on that. I want to add one thing to anybody that's in the chat right now. If you have any questions, please post them. We're going to go through a couple of questions together and then we're going to start doing Q&A with Tom. So I'd love for anybody to start dropping questions in there. So this is the third year for VetSec. I was engaged with VetSec last year, VetSecCon. Last year was the first time I really got engaged with it. And I'm really excited because I'll be speaking next year alongside some of my other veterans. Uh, so it's the third year. There are a lot of things that you guys have done just in the last year from last year to now. Can you share some of the changes that have taken place within the last two years that you're seeing um, specifically for this year? Yeah, absolutely. So the conference is going to be a similar format. It's all virtual. You know, that kind of lends credence to our involvement nationwide, uh, getting veterans from all over. Uh, last year, that was largely driven by COVID, but also cost driven as well. Um, we're going to be expanding a little bit this year. So it's going to be three days long. We're going to be hosting workshops like the one you're giving on OSINT on day one. And then uh, we're going to have a capture of the flag that runs all three days to try and get some more involvement from just everybody who wants to participate. But, uh, you know, VetSecCon serves as the way we do our annual fundraising for our operating budget. So we really look forward to, you know, partnership sponsors and then individual donations just to help with providing more resources to veterans. First and foremost, you know, VetSec's all about the community. But on top of that, um, whether it's discounts or or actual training, you know, donations in kind from our partners. That's really where we try and pass it on. How on that last part, if the community side, can anybody get engaged with VetSec and be part of the community or is it just focused on veterans only? The Slack itself is just veterans. Um, VetSecCon is our only event that we run and it's open to anybody that wants to join. You can go to vetsetcon.com and register. All of the tracks are going to be recorded um, and anybody can watch those. That's free for everyone. It's our way of giving back to our own community, but but to everyone out there and, and doing a little fundraising on the side. But the community itself is veterans only. I love that. Okay. And they can, any of the veterans that are listening right now, if they want to get on the Slack, they can go to the website and, and connect there on the Slack and everything. Get Absolutely. Yeah. Veteransec.com. Perfect. Awesome. So there was a big announcement that just kicked off for VetSec in the last couple of days. And I'm so excited. I actually shared about it on my LinkedIn if anybody was paying attention. But you were just telling me there was like you just hit Yahoo News. So what is this? What is this great news? Can you share more about it, please? <laughs> yeah, it, it's crazy. I'm still I'm still in a little bit of shock. Um, so we have about 10 members inside VetSec that work at Mandiant. And through the work of some of them, one of our board members, Jake Knowlton, and Paul Shaver, who is one of our members, who also heads up the Veterans Employee Resource Group over at Mandiant, you know, they proposed Mandiant partnering with us to, to help us out. So Mandiant announced at their Cyber Defense Summit uh, just yesterday, actually, that they are donating 33 member seats to their uh, kind of four course gamut of cyber threat intelligence courses. Um, so that's 33 seats, uh, about $4,000 for the, the four courses for the members. Also, just this week, they donated up to 20 seats for any of our members that could make it in person to go to the Cyber Defense Summit. And that included two days of training ahead of time. So um, it's just an amazing partnership for us. It's really the first of its kind that's this large. And yeah, it's, it's just awesome. Yeah, when you told me about this donation from Mandiant, I was just com I was completely beside myself. And I know working in an organization and being part of a nonprofit, there's a lot of work behind the scenes that goes on that people don't see just to try to get donations and get things like this, like courses like this donated. What if there was a if there's anybody out there that wants to donate either their personal time for education or maybe there's courses that they have or there's an organization that wants to donate funding, what's the best way for them to be able to reach out to VetSec and make that happen? Uh, if they want to talk, most of the time it's going to be directly to me, but they can go to the veteranssec.com website. We've got a contact form there, and that filters in all of our requests to join as well as any partnership requests. Also, just hit me up on LinkedIn, and, and I can make something happen there too. Um, if you're looking for, you know, an individual looking to donate, then we have donate links on both 
the Veteran Sec website and the conference website. And those go right through the PayPal giving fund. So they come directly to us with no fees or anything taken off the top. I love that, Tom. Yeah, Tom Marsland, find him on LinkedIn or VetSetCon or VetSetCon.com. Um, so I'm going to hop into a couple of questions that have been dropped in the chat very quick. And one of these I was actually very curious about as well, because most of the my experience has been virtual. But has VetSet always been virtual? Was the first year in person? No, it's all virtual. So our first con actually was was run right in the Slack and it was just some of our members and board giving back to the membership itself. And then about six months later, when I came on the board, we had the idea to put it out for everyone to see, make it free, encourage donations. And it helped showcase some of our members too. A lot of our speakers come from outside VetSec, but, but quite a few come from inside as well. We've got 31 speakers, about 40 hours of content, um, really some amazing stuff going on. I love that. So I got a message offline in one of the DMs on LinkedIn. And so this is the question. It says, will VetSec always be free? The conference, and uh, I'm not going to speak to the conference. I'm going to see what happens you know, in future years. We've been looking to get on some better platforms for the conference. So the, the cost for a ticket to the conference might help drive some of our future fundraising. But this year it is. Now the services that VetSec provides as a 501c3 to veterans will always be 100% free. You know, some of the some of the things we offer benefit-wise are discounts. And so in that case we help members if they need to make those purchases or you know they can take advantage of the discounts and do it themselves. And some of our resources are completely free. Um, our partner this year running our capture the flag event is Immersive Labs. And they're kind of a year-round partner with us. Uh, we have a cyber academy through them that's online labs, and it's open to every single member of VetSec to skill up, and it's 100% free for everyone. That's awesome. I love that. Um, for what you have got, what you have going on this year for VetSecCon, is there? Can you give us a little bit of a sneak peek of like the workshops and the individuals that are going to be speaking at the event? Just a kind of a sneak peek of the topics and everything. Yeah, absolutely. On vetsetcon.com, you'll find all of the schedule. Um, but we're going to start kind of our day zero, our day one, October 28th. Uh, we're going to do a kickoff of the Capture the Flag with Immersive Labs, and that'll run for all three days. They'll just give an intro on how to get into the platform. Uh, then we've got three workshops on day one. Uh, the second one is is by Jax here on OSINT. Um, we've got one that's strictly for our members. It's 25 members that'll be attending Joe Helly, the mayor's uh, movement pivoting and persistence course. And then we've got an evening of resumes and refreshments. And that'll be Leslie Carhart and John Stoner. Um, and that'll be really where members or anybody can come in and, and share their resume and get advice. Uh, then day two and three are kind of the official conference. You know, those are the, the conference days. We've got a keynote. Um, that's going to be Rob Lee from Dragos, the founder. And he'll be talking about recent cyber attacks and ICS and kind of where he's, where he's come from in the military and where he is today. And then we'll break off into our tracks, um, humanity, infosec skills, and transition. So the transition track, like it sounds, is all about helping people that are still in the military or recently out. Um, we're gonna talk about things like how to social engineer your next job, uh, what HR looks for in hiring veterans, transition programs to prepare for, DOD skill bridge, VA benefits, the whole nine. InfoSec skills is all about the technical side. Last year it was called our technical track, but it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, Joe Helly's giving a presentation on finding CVEs and setting yourself apart as a pen tester. We've got one on parsing logs, uh, skills to practice before a cyber incident, all sorts of good stuff there. And then finally, our humanity track. Um, this year, it's a little leaned towards our partners and sponsors, but it's really where other companies can come in and share kind of what they're doing to, to help the military, help the veterans get into the space. If there, is it too late to try and sign up as a speaker for VetSec for this year? For this year, yeah, we're full up. Okay, so what are you guys 
projecting for next year for your speakers? Are you wanting to start going down a more technical? Because you already you already brought this into a three day um, summit kind of conference style instead of just doing two days. Do you foresee it keeping at a three day? Are you wanting to expand it out more? Are you wanting to go more technical next year? Have you guys considered that? Um, if I could, I'd love to break out the technical track into maybe red team, blue team. I'd love to split that out a little bit more. I think I'd, I'd like to keep the three-day format. Um, day one, though, you know, our workshop day, right now we have no overlap there. So we have three workshops going on day one. Um, if, there was, if there was kind of a choice between workshops to go and maybe run some in parallel, I think that'd be great. That would be amazing. So if there are any anybody that would like to speak at the event, when can they reach out to you? Can they reach out to you now for next year? Should they wait? Um, on the VetSecCon website, if you click on the speakers tab, we've got a, a CFP that'll go out each year and we'll blast that on our social media. It goes out about three months before the conference. I love that. That's awesome. Okay, so I've got another question here. Um, sure. From Gerald Ogier. So besides the talks for education, what type of networking opportunities are there? Do you guys have breakout rooms or anything like that where individuals can reach out and have kind of a, like a happy hour room where they can meet one another? So one thing we're going to try out this year at the conference, um, we're running it on the platform Hopin and they have a networking tool. Anytime you're you're in the conference platform, you can go to the networking tab and it'll just randomly pair you with somebody else that's there. We're also going to be running a career fair and it'll be basically a single session room that'll be up all day. Anybody that's recruiting can come in there and see who else has joined and talk to them. Um, as far as inside VetSec itself, you know, our Slack community is really where, where the community thrives. We've got channels for resume help, interview advice, mentorship. Um, really just a whole, a whole wide range of topics there to help everybody out. Yeah, that transition piece, that's actually last year, that's what I spoke on, on the track was transition. I was still trying to get my feet kind of situated with speaking at these types of engagements. And so I figured, okay, instead of doing the OSINT one or anything that was technical, I figured I would do the transition piece. And I felt like you guys did a really good job with the diversity in the speakers that you had. Uh, for this year, for the transition piece, what is that, what does your speaker li lineup look like? Do you, it is obviously within that transition piece, but are you going to have speakers that will provide guidance with resume or is it mostly going to be talking about leaving the military and then work moving into the workforce and how to kind of make that transition? Mostly the latter. Um, really, our resume focus is going to be on that day one workshop. But we do have one of our partner organizations, TechVets, over in the UK. We have their marketing professional, Meredith Grant, coming to talk about how to market yourself. Um, and that's going to cover LinkedIn, networking. She might touch on resumes as well there. We've got Paul Wagner talking about his own journey out of the military and into his current position. And he'll be talking some about the DOD SkillBridge program and what that brings. And then uh, Bill Kafer, he's a... Uh, wrote, wrote a book on military transition, spent a lot of time in the army, and then moved on to working HR at some big corporations for some time. And so he's going to speak from the employer side of the desk on on what they look for when they're when they're screening applicants. Yeah, that's one of the areas I found really critical for military personnel to kind of understand because when you're in the military, especially when you've served for twenty years you don't have to worry about interviewing or boarding. Well, we board, but our boards are completely different. It's time and grade, and then you board for an additional rank. But many of the boards are set up very similarly, you know, and you generally know the questions that you're going to get asked. And for us, we had to remember the Army, the Soldier's Creed and the Army yep. values and all those questions. And you don't know what they're going to ask, but they're always they're always in line in that general box. But then you go to the civilian sector and it's not like that at all. There is no like, when you've done one interview, you've done one interview because they're always different. And it, even more so in this cybersecurity space, um, I'm curious for the feedback that you guys have received through these workshops and these conferences and especially with the, the transition piece in particular and teaching individuals uh, the HR process. 
how, what's the feedback that you've received from the veterans uh, just overall? The networking piece inside VetSec has really been where kind of we've made our money recently. We have a couple of recruiters now that are military veterans who are in the Slack channel and, and doing recruiting that film. Um, we've placed uh, three veterans here just in the past two weeks that I can think of just inside Slack. And, you know, we, we aren't tracking that metric really closely yet. Um, we're looking at, at kind of moving forward with some learning paths that I'm happy to talk about here. But um, really, the, the networking piece is where we're making that money. Um, the resume advice that's given in the channels, if you've been in the resume help channel, can be very blunt and to the point, but I think it's really helpful. Um, sometimes the, the veterans need to, or the guys that are still in the military coming out, you know, need to be uh, need to be humbled just a little bit by what they're putting on their resumes. But I think that um, the feedback's been positive. Um, that set con last year still was very new. Um, it was the first time we went out to the entire public. So we didn't have quite the viewership that we were we were hoping to get last year, but this year registrations have almost doubled last year already. So I'm really excited. Oh my God, that's amazing. Yes, what is, can you share? What is the registration right now? Because I know this was a topic you and I talked about um, we had you on the podcast and we, you, I'm like, I want, I want the numbers doubled that. And so it sounds like you, you've been able to achieve that. Yeah. This year we're at just over 600 right now. Um, I'm really, I'm, I'm really uh, thinking that with this, this press release that Mandy and tossed our way, you know, my LinkedIn was blowing up yesterday from people that hadn't joined VetSec yet, but were veterans and saw it and wanted to get in the space. So really excited to see some good coverage. You know, one of the things that we're really working forward to for the next year is how to get uh, into the military side more, how to reach those people that are still on active duty. Um, it's kind of a hard nut to crack. So we're still we're still looking at that. Out of that, you said 600 currently are registered. Do you know how many of those just curiosity? How do, do you know which ones are veterans versus civilians that have registered? Uh, not in front of me. I can pull that. But but I don't have those statistics yet, but. No, um, I'm an analyst, super metrics over here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have the the Excel charts and pie graphs yet, but. Gosh, dang it, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't prepare for this with all of your metrics and Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> oh, you should see how many tabs I have open right now just to field any questions you have. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, that's awesome. You mentioned, you were talking about something earlier that you were going to expand on. I should have written it down because now it's faced me, but we were talking about some of the different tracks that you have. And yeah. you were going to, do you know what I'm talking about? You I do. Gonna, you're, okay. you're talking about when I mentioned learning paths, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you expand a little bit on that? Yeah. So it's, it's just a beginning idea right now. So it's all going to be speculative. No promises on what it's going to bring. Um, but we put out a survey to our members a couple of weeks ago. And we, you know, one of the things we see is that people will come into VetSec and they are transitioning in the next year and they want to work in cybersecurity. And I'm sure you've talked to people that are in the same realm, but they don't know what they want to do in cyber yet. Uh, so one of the things we're trying to do is build learning paths, basically. We're going to educate the member on the different domains in cyber, whether it's they want to be a SOC analyst as an entry level spot, or they want to be a junior penetration tester, or they want to go into to GRC, um, you know, cyber threat intelligence, and we kind of have broken it down into like six fields. We did a survey where we gauged our membership's interest, and then we're gonna start building and kind of collating our resources that we've been given, whether it's from Mandiant or, or other organizations, and kind of develop a path for a member to go through. So if they wanna be a pen tester, you know, maybe they start with our partner over at i &E and they work on their pen testing uh, junior EJPT cert. And then from there, maybe they move on to OSCP or whatever else we can help them get. And our goal is by the end, you know, VetSec as an organization can go and tell that employer, hey, we've certified that this member has the skills to get a position at your company, at least at the entry level. You know, maybe some advanced learning paths later on, but, you know, uh, I don't think it'll be a flat out certification, but I do think that it'll be, hey, VetSec's throwing their weight behind this person. They've completed this learning path. And then I'm hoping to get some employers to partner with us to say, hey, if you complete this with VetSec, 
we're going to at least give you an interview and bypass the whole HR applicant tracking system kind of bullshit that's out there. I get that totally. And I love this. That would be amazing. When, when are you guys thinking about uh, moving into this path and kicking this really off? Is it still, so it sounds like it's still kind of in the think tank phase right now and trying to figure it out. Yeah, I would say definitely think tank phase right now. Um, I'd like to have at least one of our paths up by the end of the year. Um, I don't want to commit to much heavier than that with kind of our day job going on. Um, but, but that's kind of where we're looking. I love it. Uh, Gerald was saying with you, with me, an alternate veteran support grow, uh, program has similar learning path. I think not sure if there's some synergy opportunities. So, Hey, who, who knows if anybody knows anybody at that organization, we can reach out, try it. See, I love synergy. Um, yeah, if anybody from with you, with me is on here, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'd love to talk. Um, uh, Really, that's kind of what I spend most of my free time doing is finding organizations that have similar goals and trying to see how we can work together. Being an evangelist. I love it. So VetSec is known for at least how I knew it was VetSecCon, but it's more than that. Like it, it was how I'm understanding it is you've got VetSec Inc., the, the nonprofit, and then you've got VetSecCon, which was a conference, a platform for you to be able to allow um, individuals to come and speak to veterans and other general population populace in the community. Is that an accurate assessment? You've got VetSec Inc., the actual foundation, and then VetSec Kong is part of it, but it's the conference side. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, VetSec Inc., you know, is, is all year long. And really, if the day-to-day -day is our Slack community, um, there's, there's not much else there. You know, we will provide, we provide an opportunity via our website at veteransec.com for members to blog and get their name out there about technical uh, or anything else that's going on that they want to blog about. We've had members speak about the, the hardships of the transition. We've had members speak on mental health and also just technical, technical stuff there. Um, and then inside the Slack community all day long, you know, we've got probably close to 50 channels, um, education, programming, um, events and meetups, um, some general, general social channels, and then some channels on the different domains in cyber, as well as, you know, a job listings channel where people that, that see jobs out there can post them for, for other members. Um, jobs discussion is, is super active today. People are talking about kind of what to look for in the work-life balance right now. Uh, and then uh, LinkedIn profile sharing, um, resume help, you know, interviews, the whole nine there. I love that. Is there, are you guys expecting to do maybe in the future for VetSec where you actually do um, veteran retreats where they can get together in person and it's an event where it's at a known location you can come and it's not just cybersecurity, but also bringing veterans together in a, in a specific location to commune. I think the way we're going to, we're going to see that play out here in the near term is you know, if we can get tickets for, for some of our members to go to different conferences. So it was super awesome. One of the guys that went to the Mandiant Cyber Defense Summit for the training, uh, they went to a malware analysis course and there were four VETSEC members there. And so they took a picture and sent it to us. Uh, but I think meetups at conferences is going to be the, the near term. I would love to do something individual here at VETSEC, maybe do break out into chapters or something along those lines. Um, just with the, the community, you know, we cater to, it's military from all over. So nationwide, it's kind of hard to, to pick a place and, and make everyone happy with, hey, this is where we're going to be. Oh, yeah, you can't make everybody happy. Just hop around. And I just vote it's never in Las Vegas. I lived there for four and a half years. Wow. And I have zero desire. Everybody wants to do conferences in Las Vegas. I literally am like, this is like the armpit of America, in my humbled opinion, outside of Fort Sill, it's pretty close, but yeah. at least there's a little bit more activities in Vegas than there is Fort Sill. If anybody's had to go and be stationed at Fort Sill, I am terribly sorry. Got that. Well, we've got two board members, myself and, and Mike Bishop here in the Seattle area. So if I had to vote, that's where I'd start, but we'll see. I need to get to Seattle. Absolutely. I got a couple of, uh, the co-authors of the book are out there. So I love it. I, I need to get to Seattle. Yeah, John's right up in Snohomish. Yeah, I love it. We're going to do Seattle. Done. I vote. I vote, even though I'm not on the board or anything. <laughs> I vote. 
Um, so we had another question come in. Gerald was wanting to know curiosity on the capture the flag events. Um, yeah. can you participate in those if you're not, if you're in or out of the conference. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to get the sign up info posted on the, the event page. Um, I've got to talk to immersive labs and see when the sign up info will go live, but uh, the actual CTF will go live starting with the conference kickoff at 7:30 on October 28th. And then it will go all the way through to the ending ceremonies on the October 30th at the end. Um, and yeah, anybody can participate in the CTF as well. I love it. And behind the scenes, people are making some magic happen. Uh, we got Josh over here saying he was going to connect the Toms on LinkedIn and telling uh, Jerry it was a good call with, with you, with me. And then the next thing you know, we've got Jerry already over here and he already set up a group message with you. So things are happening right. behind the scenes. I love this. You guys are awesome. I love this community. Um, so Josh also has a question for you. Um, are there going to be any giveaway opportunities during the con that you can share? Is it going to be a surprise? <laughs> uh, I will share the CTF. So Immersive Labs donated one year of their Cyber Pro subscription to their lab environment. Um, it's a one year and that'll go to the winner of the CTF. And then they are throwing 50 and $25 gift cards at, sec at second and third place. Oh my gosh, I love that. So if there are, if there's anybody listening right now that might have a last minute donation for you, what is the best way for them to be able to reach out to you? Either LinkedIn or the contact info on our site. I love it. And I'm just going to keep asking you that, you know, in case yeah, you in the middle of this. Yep. <laughs> we are at, um, I think we're at eight, eight or nine sponsors right now. Um, and we are still accepting sponsors and donations all the way through. You know, we're really hoping to uh, really kind of expand on the resources we provide to our members, especially if we get these learning paths up, you know, I recognize that some of the resources that we're gonna, we're gonna put on those paths aren't going to be something that we can receive via donation. So all of the funds that we raise via VetSecCon and, and VR donations are gonna go straight towards purchasing those for our members. Love that. Um, so for, I've got a question about dependence. You know, that is an area that's kind of a gray area, veteran dependence. And yep. sometimes they receive the same discounts and benefits as veterans do because, you know, they've served side by side. How does that work for VetSec? Do they, are the dependents allowed to be part of the Slack channel or is it only individuals that are DD-214 and, and that served in the military? Right now, it's only individuals who are DD-214 served. Um, there are a lot of other organizations that do expand that to include military spouses, and I think they're awesome for doing so. Um, our charter, and we've we've talked about this on the board extensively right now, is to focus on the military. A large part of that is the community. You know, I think that there's there, it'd be great to give them the discounts if they were interested in getting into cyber as well. But the community is where we shine. And there are things that are discussed inside the Slack community that are really just meant for the veterans only. Um, in particular, you know, our mental health channel. Uh, messages disappear after a certain amount of time, and, but we really want to keep the community as much of a safe space for veterans to be open as possible. Yeah, that mental health channel is is critical. And I think that this community does a really good job about VetSec, does a really good job at creating a safe space for veterans to be able to go in, especially in the Slack channel, because I'm in there as well. And there's it's a judgment-free zone and you're able to connect with one another and just kind of talk and connect with other like-minded people in the, in the cybersecurity space. And I love that. Um, are you guys planning on doing any like future happy hour events or like a Christmas event or anything where the veterans can come together for a couple of hours over say a Zoom session. Is anything, are you guys planning anything like that for the fall? I don't have anything specific to share. Um, you know, so much of what we do is volunteer based. So we did a mental health get together every, I think it was every other week for a while. Um, one of the members was just running that, but anybody that's in VetSec, if they want to stand something up like that, I'm I'm happy to support. There's just limited bandwidth that the board has to work on things. Right. Um, and now I'm uh, talking about bandwidth and everything. So right now you've got the VetSecCon that takes place every year. Is there a likelihood that you guys might be doing two conferences maybe next year or the following year? Um, 
we'll see how that set con 21 goes. Um, I'm not going to commit to expanding much past that. I would really like to focus on some of our other thoughts, you know, with the learning paths and, and getting our name into the military space a little more before we look at a second fundraising kind of event. Um, I would love to, I'd love to find reasons to get more of our community together. Uh, but right now I think we're just going to stick to the annual. I think it's a good idea, especially getting it going um, and just you building the momentum. I mean, you're hitting 600. Are you projecting for next year to be able to double that again and have 1,200? I would love to. Um, you know, especially with the platform that we moved to for the event this year over at Hoppin, I think that that'll support that. Um, last year it was just over Zoom and it was a little rudimentary. It worked. Um, you know, you spoke there and I think it worked out, but it was a little a little bit of a cluster sometimes, you know, three different Zoom accounts streaming to three different YouTube channels. Um, so this year, I think it's going to be a lot tighter, a lot neater, everything in one place. Um, I'd love to work with sponsors next year just to build out the Hopin has like an expo feature where sponsors can have booths. And I'd love to explore the platform more and open that up to, to some bigger and better sponsorships. Yeah, I love being part of Vet Tech Con. I, and I didn't feel like I was be I didn't feel like it was very clunky last year. I think you guys did a really good job, at least from my end. So the behind the scenes mess that you that was probably taking place, I couldn't tell. And I know that I was speaking. I had another uh two other veterans I knew that were speaking, and it in my opinion went really smooth. So I'm excited to see how it goes and flows this year. Um who is your, did you already say, I, if you did, I apologize, I don't remember, but do you have a keynote? Who's your keynote? It's Rob Lee over at Dragos. That's right. That's right. That's awesome. I love that. That's great. How do you guys pick your keynotes? Um, I would say a little bit of the the reaching out and seeing who's willing. Um, you know, we have a couple people that we had in mind um, and just kind of seeing who we can, who we can get to reply to us. Um, I'd like to attract more speakers here next time around. You know, this year um, our CFPs went out a couple of months ago. We didn't quite get enough speakers just off the initial run to fill our tracks. So then we reached out ourselves, both inside VetSec and out. Um, for our for our keynote this year, actually uh, last year, Leslie Carhart spoke at, at VetSec, uh, at VetSec Con about, uh, I think it was in, introduction to ICS. And so it was just kind of a natural extension to ask Rob to see if he'd come this year. I love that. Yeah. Leslie's speaking again this year. So that's, uh, that's awesome. I'm always excited when I can share a stage with her and the other individuals, you've got some big names. Um, you had Chloe, is Chloe speaking this year as well? Not this year. No, nope. she did our keynote last year talking about mental health and burnout during kind of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, but this year, not this year, um, but we do have some awesome people like, you know, Jack's coming to speak on OSIN. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah I, I tried to back out of that, actually, everybody. I was like, hey, so, Tom, you know, do you want to slide me in the transition talk? He's like, no, it's already locked in. I was like, okay, just checking. Nope, too late, too late. Um, <laughs> but we've got John coming back. Uh, you That'll know. be fun. That'll be good. Yeah, yeah, we've got a we've got a good group of people coming to speak. I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah, if, if anybody listening, if you haven't gone on and online and gone to vetsetcon.com and checked it out, you can see the speakers that are that are already up, and it's going to be a really good dynamic lineup. I'm extremely excited about the the three days. I I know I learned a lot and. Actually, at VetSec, that's where I met John Helmus, and he's a co-author of our book. And if it was not for VetSec, Tom, I would have never met John, which I would have never met Erica McDuffie, the co-host of our podcast. And I would have never met Jerry, who then wrangled me into writing a book, one of the most best experiences ever in my life, at least within the last year or two, best experiences, all because of VetSec. And the to share the story with you how i even got involved with vetsec my mentor at the time a warrant officer a special ops warrant officer in the cyberspace reached out to me and he said hey look look what i found vetsec you should send it and i had wanted to get into doing more speaking so as soon as i got on there i saw you had the button at the time that still said speak at the event and i was like yeah. i wrote him back and i'm like 
screw intending, let's speak. And he was even like, what? I didn't even comprehend, didn't even think about that. And I was like, Heck yeah, let's speak. So I got him to speak. I spoke and then I also attended, but it yep. was, it was literally vet sec changed my life in a, in a few different ways. And so I'm a huge advocate. I'll probably every year until you tell me I can't ever speak there ever again, I'll probably just keep submitting just so I can give my knowledge back and support because um, it, it literally changed my life. So I hope that other people can hear this and just, yeah, attend, reach out to others, network. I, I met John through LinkedIn and one of your other speakers last year, Kim Wynn also yep. spoke and she's a co-author of the book. So it's wild and she's a civilian. So yep. it was very cool. It's a very cool it, it, space. You know, in the active duty Navy, uh, I serve in the submarine force and we're a super small community. We see the advancement results every year and I scroll the list and I recognize names. Um, it's a, it's a super small community. And that's one thing that I love about VetSec and the community we built here in cybersecurity is it's very similar. You know, for myself, I don't know where I'd be without it either. I mean, I'm just fortunate to to be able to help in the in the role I'm filling right now. But you know, two years ago, I had a bachelor's in IT security. I was still working in the submarine force, and I still am to this day. But but I didn't know exactly how to get from there to you know my EOS and and my transition. And I feel significantly more prepared now than I ever did back then. I know I'm excited for you because you're, yeah, you're about to be in that transition and it can be a really nerve wracking time. And I, I already told you, you're going to be just fine. You're going to land on your feet. You've got a great network and you've got it. You've, you've built an awesome community that's going to help you. So I think your transition will be pretty seamless in a lot of ways. So I'm excited to see where you head off to after, after you hang up your uniform for good. Yeah, I've got about two years to go. I'm hoping to start a skill bridge internship around that time and then kind of make a seamless transition out. I'd love to stay helping VetSec as much as possible, even after I'm out of the military, obviously. You know, I have a couple of close friends that got out of the military from the nuclear power field and are in IT now. And one of them just joined VetSec last week because he's finally, you know, stable in his career and feels like he's in a position where he can give back to. So. That's what it's all about. So many people that use the resources we have to get into the field and then come back and say, hey, OK, now it's my time to to give advice and some mentorship. Yeah, absolutely. You see, what's so interesting is the military, like you have mentors and mentees, but it's not, in my opinion, it's not like you see in the civil, in the uh, cybersecurity sector. It's uh, we really in this sector thrive on having that mentor mentee relationship. And I really love that because we have, as warrant officers, as a warrant officer, when you graduate from Army Warrant Officer School, I don't know how it is for you guys in the Navy, but you actually, right when you graduate, you're supposed to name your mentor, which is usually two ranks above you. And it's that individual, they're supposed to be in your same branch and they're designed to, and they don't have to be geographically located. It's just an individual that you look up to and then they're supposed to mentor you. I never had that because my branch was so new as electronic warfare. Um, sure. So I just kind of figured it out. But I've seen the successes in the warrant branch from that. And I feel like that's very similar in the cybersecurity space on how we we do that mentor. It's not always people in the same arena, though. If you notice that, like it's not I've, I've worked with individuals that are red teamers that have been mentors for me or in the GRC space that have been mentors where I did CTI, but it was, it was a very unique dynamic environment though. Yeah, absolutely. I think we don't have anything quite like that in the, in the Navy. Um, but you know, everyone makes impacts on everybody else. And, you know, just, just yesterday, actually, one of my sailors reached out to me because he was selected for promotion and and thanked me for the mentorship that I gave him a couple of years back when we served together. So, you know, the small community, I think it it definitely ties back to, to what we do in VetSec. And I, you know, something you said kind of hit me there, you know, so many people like you, you know, you said you kind of just figured it out. And I think we see that a lot with, with the transition. I think that there's a lot of people that kind of just figure it out. And if we can provide some course, kind of path to helping them out, and if we can reach all those people, you know, there's there's almost 200,000 people getting out of the military every year. 
for whatever reason, whether they're, you know, did 20 or 30 and they're retiring or they did their four or six year commitment of service to their country and they're getting out. But if we can provide all of them and reach to them before they transition, you know, I have guys that got out of the submarine force and they went back to their parents and are sleeping on their mom's couch because they didn't know what to do or, or how to do it. So that's, that's what vet sex all about, at least in the cyber realm. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that that is that that unfortunately is more common than not of getting out of the military, especially when you've served in a specific branch for 20 plus years and you get out and you don't know what to do or you're not accepted in the space that you thought you were going to be accepted in, such as like program management. And I've seen a lot of people that are like, okay, I'm going to get out. I'm going to get my program manager certification. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And they get into it. They get in a structured environment. They have a different mentality. They didn't do a proper transition out and they just, they crumble and fall. And it's, really disheartening. And it a lot of that is because of the lack of community and support. Because when you leave, a lot of times your community stays, you come yep. out and now you're having to recreate yourself. But what I see with VetSec is you're providing that community. Some of us are still in, some of us are still out, but you have that community. It's kind of like you have a community on both sides. When you tr do that transition out, you're not left alone and you're, you're, your family used to have they can still continue for, but now you've got this community on the other side, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. I love that's that. A, that's a good way to put it. That bridge there. I like that a lot. That's at least how I viewed it for in my life and my experiences. And I'm so glad that I'm now on this side of it because my first few years was really tough for me and it was mentally exhausting and draining. And I had my own really, really hard path. And now I'm in a really good space and recommendations that I give to veterans is, you know, obviously VetSec in the Slack channel is going to be primarily military. It's still a great first start to build that community. But another thing that you can do is start going to networking events and meeting other civilians. And mm -hmm. I know that seems like common sense. Oh yeah, no big deal. But when you start hanging out with civilians and going into civilian events and communicating and doing things with more civilians, you start realizing that there's a different way of communicating and the mannerisms are different, especially in the cybersecurity space. It's just like it, it you start learning all those mannerisms, the communications, and then you build a community on that side. And that will also help you as part of your transition. You won't feel as lost and almost as I felt like I wasn't seen or heard but it was because I was communicating differently. And so it wasn't that I wasn't being seen or heard. People just couldn't, they didn't understand me at that time. Yeah, yeah definitely different relating to someone who's done their time in the military and someone that hasn't served. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great experience. <laughs> <laughs> Total sarcasm. So I've got a question here from Josh. This is a really great question he had. So it, is VETSEC only for U.S. military veterans or will it grow to international in, in the future? No, that's a great question. So we, we are international. Um, for those of you that are, that are watching that are in the military, um, we serve the U.S. military and military veterans and the allies. Um, we call them the 14 eyes countries. So if you came from one of those countries and you're a veteran, you're eligible to join. Now our services, you know, our resources, some of those are very US based, you know, the Mandiant Conference in Washington DC, for example. Um, but some of them like the CompTIA academic partnership discount that we can provide to all of our members, that's open to everyone. Um, so I try and partner with organizations that are in other countries doing similar things. Um, and actually, you know, talking back to mentorship over at TechVets in the UK, um, they are, really they are just like VetSec, but over in the UK and they provide resources that are very unique to the European Union and to the UK. And so uh, James Murphy, the CEO over there has been a great mentor for me trying to build VetSec here in the United States. So any member that joins VetSec from the UK, they're welcome to be a member and use our resources, but I'm also going to, to push them at James because he can help them better than I can. And he does the same thing for members over there that have come into his organization. He kind of, you know, hey, VetSec can help you out a little bit more than we can if you're in these states. So we are international um, to answer the question, but uh, 
you know, we definitely serve people here in the United States better than, than the rest. I love that. I actually was not aware that you were international. So I just learned something new. So that was a great question. Thanks, Josh. So Keith asked this question. I know you've said it a couple of times, but I would love for you to, to tell the viewers where they could go if they wanted to donate for anything vet, vet sec, uh, vet sec con. Yeah, I would love to. Um, so organizations that can reach out to us via sponsorships. We have our sponsorship prospectus right on vetsetcon.com. Um, for individual donations, um, I'll just list them. So we accept donations through the PayPal Giving Fund, and that link is on the vetsetcon website right at the top. Uh, it's also donate.vetsetcon.com. Um, and then if you go to the veteransec.com website, our main corporate website, we accept donations there. Um, a lot of those are subscription based from our members. So we have a Patreon. You can go to Patreon and search for VetSec, or you can go to donate.veteransec.com and sign up for a recurring if you're interested in that. Finally, and I encourage everybody to do this because it won't cost you a dime and it'll help us, you know, every penny counts. If you use Amazon, Use Amazon Smile, smile.amazon.com, and select VetSec as your charity of choice, and we will get a little cut every time you buy something on Amazon. I love that. I'm going to make sure that I put all that information below for everybody. I'll probably have to reach out to you, Tom, and get all, all everything you just shared. So uh, if you're watching this now and it's posted on YouTube, you can get all that information below, which is awesome. I'm curious, uh, there was a message in here that Josh posted, more of a comment. He put, with you, uh, with you, with me, is also for military family members, which could include kids and more. Um, for VetSec, what is the typical age group that you're seeing getting involved with VetSec? That's kind of, that question kind of spurred when I saw this, this comment from Josh. Yeah, so most of the people that are still in the military are in there you know, mid twenties, mid to upper twenties, they're the people that have done their first tour and they're looking to move into the IT sector in, in civilian land um, or deciding whether they, they can feasibly move there. We do have a lot of industry professionals though that are, that are a bit older that have that experience that are giving back. So really it's a wide range of ages, um, military, younger, experienced professionals, older. I like that, okay. I have another question that popped in, but before I, I go to that, I want to know, can you share with us any future marketing or press release events that we can take part with, take part of in the next few weeks before VetSec actually kicks off? Um, so every day we're featuring our speakers and our sponsors via social media. Um, no specific events planned for VetSec as a whole. I am trying to get out there as much as I can and market. Um, so actually, Jerry, your partner writing the book there, um, I'll be live streaming with him about, I think, this same time next week, actually. Um, and then, yeah, kind of blasting social media and uh, building out the platform for the conference, just kind of tidying up all those loose ends. That's right. Simply Cyber. If you guys aren't following Jerry, you need to follow him. Simply Cyber on YouTube. You are going to be going live. That's what I was looking for. It's going to be a great show. I'm excited for that one as well. Is that gonna be kind of AMA style as well? Yeah, absolutely. Any, anything Jerry wants to ask me, I'm game. Oh, that's gonna be scary, wild. <laughs> <laughs> Just unleash and let him go. Um, so Josh has an awesome question. I think I know what the answer is to this, but would VetSec wanna be part of New Village at DEF CON? The answer is a resounding yes, we would love to be. That is amazing, Josh. So. Um, yeah, you guys can connect, you know how to reach out to Josh. So you guys can get connected on that. That's great. Thank you, Josh, for throwing that out. I don't know if that's more of a question or if that's, uh, he's asking you and you say yes. And he's like, cool. I was just wondering that was that. And if things yeah, we'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out about that way. Yeah. I'd love to. Oh, too bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was just curious. I was just doing it like a, like a test pulse, pulse test to see if you really wanted to be part of this. That's awesome. It's awesome, Josh. Um, so is there a way for our listeners to be able to reach you? We've got VetSecCon and VetSec.com, but can you share maybe your LinkedIn or an email address or anything like that that they can reach out to you with? Yeah. So for general inquiries, info at VeteranSec.com. And then hit me up on LinkedIn at Thomas Marsland. Um, 
And I see Josh just threw one more question at us. Steven Semeroff is talking this year. Um, his talk is, let's get ready to CISO. Win your first 90 days as a CISO. So, uh, but please, uh, LinkedIn is the best. Info at veteransec.com is another great way to get a hold of me. Happy to talk to anybody with questions about VetSec or VetSec.com. I love that. All right. So we've got next week on Thursday, Simply Cyber with Jerry, another AMA. Um, I know we're coming up on time. We've got a couple of more minutes before we fully log off. I just posted if there's any last minute questions for anybody in the chat, please post them below. I'm curious for you, though, for your future goals and kind of where you're going. You've got two years. Do you are you what are your plans for these next two years? I mean, are you planning to kind of do the whole slow down or are you going to do the opposite? So for the next two years, you're just going to start ramping up on like education and your transition piece to like move yourself into a posture to be ready to jump right out of the uniform and into civilian life. So I don't want to hit two years from now and be burnt out from the pace I'm at right now. Um, that being said, you know, I've served 20 years serving on submarines away from my family a lot. Um, so two years from now, I want to be slowed down a little bit. Um, but for the next two years, I'm going to keep up this pace. So I've got uh, in the spring, I'll be finishing my master's in cybersecurity. Um, I'm working on my OSCP right now. Um, I, actually, John taught me a lot about that. Um, so I'm trying to finish that up by the end of the year um, and then figure out what I want to do for the next couple. But that's kind of my near term. I love that, Tom. And I look forward to the day that we can actually meet each other in person. I know it's going to happen probably in a couple of years once the COVID and everything calms down. Hey, just come up to Seattle and hang out with John. I know I need to. Yeah, Tom, Kim, there's a couple of other people that I know that live out there. So, hey, Jerry, uh, we're going to have to do a trip to Seattle. We're going to have to make that happen. Do like a book club or something. Barnes there you go. Do a book up. signing in Seattle. <laughs> yeah. Wait, there's like a, um, B-sides out there or something. We can do a book signing and talk at. That would be great. Make it a business. Or just trip. like sit outside Microsoft. Oh, no. they won't mind that at all. Yeah, no. not at all. That's bit, <laughs> might get arrested, but that's okay. It's all part of the journey. YOLO, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Tom, you've been awesome. I'm so thrilled that we were able to make this happen. I'm even more thrilled about my amazing talk. So I can't wait for everybody to tune in for that, um, which will be on the 28th, I think is what you said is when I'm talking. So Come catch my talk. 28th at noon Pacific. There you go. 28 noon Pacific. You can hear me talk about all things OSENT. Um, Tom, you've been awesome. Anything, any last words before we end recording? No, just thanks for having me. And please check out the conference on VetSec. You guys got it. VetSecCon.com. See ya.